Hey, this is Kendi Fawumi. You're listening to the Unleash Your Genius podcast. What we've shared over and again is that financial independence is the ability to live from the income of your resources, talking about the passive income. So for example, the things that, that you do directly where you exchange your time for money is not passive income. That's like active income because you need to give your time to get that money. But if you can get to a point where your own resources can make money for you without you needing to do anything. So for example, you invested in the stock market or in a, some kind of a fund and without you having to do anything, that money makes some profits for you. That is passive income. Or you bought a business and that business, um, you employed some leaders or management um, consultants or management team to look over that business and you do not have to do anything in that business. Every profit made from that business is a passive income for you because you didn't have to trade your time for that profit. So financial independence truly comes when you can now live from the income of those resources. And that's what we're trying to achieve here. And the biggest thing is that now you can work not because you need to, but because you want to and you love to. So but m- many of you are probably already wondering, okay, I just wish I had more money so I can buy more Neo or more Tesla because I don't have enough money to do that. If I had more money, I would have a better plan and then I can become richer. If I had more money, then I can, you know, I do, I have more, you know, flexibility to do more things. But that is fundamentally wrong because you don't need more money to be rich. What you need is that consciousness I talk about. It's a state of mind, but also it's a plan of action, right? So please do not think that you need more money from right now um, to become rich. Do not think so. It does not matter what level you are. And that's why I like this cash flow game that that I recommended to you. You know, it starts with anybody. It starts with a carpenter. It starts with a management, um, you know, a CEO of a company. It starts at any level and everyone can escape that rat race. And that's important for you to keep in mind. You do not necessarily need more money. What you need is to become the person. And that's what I mean by talking about having the consciousness of riches. Um, Become the person that is rich because Things, riches will find you when you have the consciousness of riches. You know, opportunities will come to you. You would attract all the conversations, all the people, all the ideas, all the businesses, all, everything will come to you. I can already tell you that the reason you are anywhere here is because you are navigating towards the consciousness of being rich. You didn't just find this information by luck or anything. You we're thinking about this before this come around your consciousness. That's important. You anyway already are thinking about this. You have been wondering about it. So this is not a lock situation that I am now in your life telling you all this information. You were thinking about it. And that's proof to you to say that, well, <laughs> um, it is what you have it is where you've brought yourself in your journey and my point for you is what i'm trying to get you at is how to keep up that momentum how to even take it to the next level you know how how to pull it further up you know um based on some of the businesses and some of the, the the transactions i made in the course in the past two weeks i've added about i think ten thousand euros or something to my own net worth you know and that's what we're talking about how can you keep that kind of momentum? How can you get to that point? Of course, it's true that if you have more money, you can scale faster. You can do bigger deals. But you do not need that to start. You don't have to be great to start, but you have to start to be great. This is what I want to recommend. The first step is to build capital. The second step, and I explain what that means. Second step would be that now that you have some kind of capital, start investing first and then spending the rest. I already told you in the past that the rich invest first and spends the rest. The poor spends first and and invest the rest. And that makes a lot of difference. Then the third step is generate active profits. Active profits are profits that come from an active engagement where you still 
kind of have to trade a bit of your time. So for example, if I made money from this session that we're having now, if each of you had paid 1,000 you know, euros for this session, that would be active income for me because I needed to stand behind my screen and teach something and share information to you for the money that I'm getting. That would be active income for me. And if I recorded all those sessions and then start selling it as a course online where people have to pay 50 or 500 um, thousand dollars um, to, to gain access to the, to the information. That would be passive profit for me because I only did it once and then subsequently people can just consume it without me doing anything about it again, apart from marketing it and all those things. And I don't need to be the one marketing it. I can get a team that does that for me. And that would then be a passive income for me, you know? So you get it in between active and passive now because Passive means it really does not need your involvement. It really does not need anything for you to do. You're not trading time for that thing that you're getting. And then the final step is then to scale those passive profits. What does this mean? To build capital, you need to learn to live on 70% of your net income. And you can. You absolutely can. This simple spending habit or this ch daily change in your spending habit will help you save 30% on a monthly basis. Or if you're not collecting you know, your money on a monthly basis, uh, on whatever basis, you would have enough to, to, um, to take care of. Which means that you invest you know, that 30% or whatever outline or whatever plan I would give you now, you do that first and then spend the rest. Again, keep that in mind. But the first point is that you need to be able to not just spend everything that comes to you. You need to be able to give yourself the allowance to grow your riches. Treat that income as a seed. If you eat your seed, it's gone. You now have the chance, opportunity to realize the potential of that seed. And my point is that you need to be able to think about that income or your capital right now as a seed that you can grow. Now, what do you do with the rest of the, of the 30%? Five to ten percent, give it to charity or courses, and this would be something like what the opportunity that the church gives to you, for example, to pay your tithe or um, give to some kind of course that's important. Maybe feeding of the needy or helping young people um, receive education and all that. When we go back to why you want to be rich, I bet with you, if you think deep enough you would see yourself navigating out of the flimsy to be able to own this physical thing, get that property there and all that. You would get yourself navigating towards fulfillment, more, more spiritual values, things that give you a sense of purpose, a sense of relevance, a sense of significance. So what you are truly looking for is actually, it's success in some way, but it's deeper than that. It's significance that you matter and that you would matter for generations to come. And you see, what well, that's what charity does for you. Most of my organizations, Feed Ones, The Body Experience are nonprofits. Uh, I start them because I want them in the mode that I, want, that I think charity should be like. Other for profits for me would be acquired businesses. I'll just buy it off because I know I'm just doing this for money right? Um, but I care so deeply personally, um, you know, right from my young age, I would give and just give and just give, right? Because there is something beautiful about that level of satisfaction where you feel rich deep down your heart comes from doing these kind of things. I hope you, I hope you understand that. But then active investments, that's where the money comes, right? <laughs> Um, and you want to give some part of your of that money to that and also passive investment. And again, I already gave you that the, the difference between those two. And what I want you to do is that once you get your profit, don't just spend the profit because that's where rich is truly set in. You don't make you don't become rich by just um investing in Neo, getting 50% profit, and then you get that money out and then you spend it. So, so what does it add up to, right? Um, the point is about how can you continue to grow your profit? What do you do now that you have that money? And that's what you want to do. You want to repeat the steps for it. Of course, satisfy some of the bills or things you want to 
to pay and of course invest more actively and passively um preferably more passively because then you don't need to trade your time or get super busy and all those kind of things and that's what you want to do the good thing is that for the profit, you do not then need to even spend 70% of that because I'm assuming you have some other source of income that anyways pays all your bills. And then your profit, you basically can just plow it back and then grow it. Of course, feel free to um, gratify yourself in tiny, small ways. But again, remember the concept of delayed gratification. You don't need to buy that car now because now you just got it raised or because you, you know, Think about okay, what is the best way I can I can I can live my life at this time without being greedy. Then keep track, measure, measure your passive income because how would you know when you've escaped the rat race? How would you know if you're not keeping track of your passive income? Escaping the rat race means that your passive income is now higher than your monthly expenses. Or let me say your monthly passive income is now higher than your monthly um, expenses, which means that without doing anything, all your passive income can take care of all your expenses and that's where you want to be but how do you know if you do not measure how much passive income you are getting in that's important and then the last part there is scaling your passive income you want to scale that you want to build that you want to increase those sources of passive income and that's what's important and we've talked about different options for your active investment for your passive investment the things that you can do and we can go into more details i um, in the q a session but this is what i want you to think about which means that on a daily basis, when you refuse to spend that money, you have in, at the back of your mind that I'm doing this because I only want to live on 70% of my net income because the other 30%, I want to use it for this and this and that. So you have that bigger picture in your mind in taking the daily things that you commit yourself to do.